Welcome to our lecture online. Before we execute some specific examples of how to calculate the heat transfer through force convection from different objects, let's do a general case with predefined numbers. So here we're trying to find the heat flow from an object as a function of the transfer coefficient, the surface area, and the difference in the temperature between the object and the ambient air. So the transfer coefficient can be calculated as being the ratio of the conductivity constant of the fluid divided by the characteristic length times the Nusselt number. Now the Nusselt number can be calculated by finding a constant in the table depending upon the value of the Reynolds number, the Reynolds number to some, some exponent, and the Prandtl number to the one-third power, presuming that the Prandtl number is greater than 0.6 and the Reynolds number is less than 300,000. For some specific values, characteristic length of 0.4, the velocity of the fluid is 5 meters per second at 20 degrees centigrade. That gives us a viscosity for the air is about 1.785 times 10 to the minus 5 pascal times seconds. The heat conductivity of air is 0.026, and the density of air at room temperature is about 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. So the Reynolds number can be calculated using this equation, the Prandtl number using this equation. Characteristic length, the velocity of the fluid, the density of the fluid, divided by the viscosity of the fluid. The Prandtl number is the viscosity of the fluid times the heat constant, or the specific heat, divided by the con conductivity constant. And then, knowing that we calculated the specific heat for air as 1,000 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, and the constant that we got off the table for the value of the Reynolds number that we're going to expect, 0 0.0366, with a with an exponent of 0 0.805. So let's go ahead and just calculate it as an example. Let's start with the Reynolds number, which is equal to the characteristic length, which is 0 0.4. And remember that all these numbers, all the units tend to cancel out, or don't tend to cancel out, they actually do cancel out the velocity at 5 meters per second, the density at 1.225, and then we divide that by the viscosity of 1.785 times 10 to the minus 5. So when we do that, we get a Reynolds number. So 0.4 times 5 times 1.225 divided by 1.785 e to the 5 minus equals 137,255. 137,255. Notice that's still less than the limit that we can use for this particular equation, so we're good to go. How about the Prandtl number? That will be equal to, where is it, right here? The coefficient, which is 1.785 times 10 to the minus 5, multiply that times C sub P, which is 1004, all divided by K, which is 0 0.026. 0 0.026, and that'll give us a Prandtl number. So 1.785 e to the 5 minus times 1004 divided by 0 0.026 equals. 0.689, 0 0.689, and notice that we said that m, which is the exponent of the Reynolds number, was 0 0.805, which we can get out of the table that we saw a few videos ago, and now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the Nusselt number, the Nusselt number, n sub nu is equal to the constant, and the constant we said was going to be 0 0.0366, again, we get that from the table, um, and then we multiply it times the Reynolds number, the Reynolds number is 137,255, all raised to the 0 0.805 power, and that should be an 8, 805 power, and then we multiply it times the Prandtl number, which is 0 0.689, Oop, that should be an 8, raised to the one-third power. All right, given all that, we're now able to calculate the Nusselt number. Okay, so we take that to the one-third power. We multiply it times 
37, 255, raised to the 0 0.805 power. Then we multiply it times 0 0.0366 equals, and we get 442. So it gives us a Nussel number of 442. Now, to get the transfer coefficient, h, we multiply it times k. Now k is going to be 0 0.026 divided by the characteristic length, which we said was 0 0.4, multiplied times the Nussel number of 442. And so what do we get? times 0 0.026 divided by 0.4 equals, we get 28.7, 28.7, and that would be in terms of watts per square meter times Kelvin. And that is how we're able to calculate the transfer coefficient for forced convection if we can calculate the Nusselt number. And that is how it's done.